Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you again for those that continue to follow the show. We appreciate that very much for, um, gosh, I'd like to remind everyone because it's a good reminder for myself you now for 11 plus years over 1700 interviews when it comes to radio and podcast and uh have been doing fewer of them so i gotta step that up and get back to it but uh, it's been a great run a lot of great shows and guests and along the way and uh, we'll continue to bring that information you know a lot of the show we're going to do today is the question i'm going to throw out to and have jack russo here with me as well is the throat question we're going to throw out to the audience Today is California bad for business. I know that may be kind of vague and strange to sounding, but we're going to dive in a little bit and unpack this and talk a little bit about what's going on. I think that there's so much noise is the best I could figure is that I'm not sure that one day we're going to wake up and turn around and go, did we not see this coming? And so I think it is coming, and I think Jack does too. We just It's hard to say when and how big, but yeah. So the question is, we have the big obvious ones. I'll just kick it off. We had Oracle decide to leave for Texas. Jack points out, of course, billionaire likely, uh, stalwart in the community, probably 30 plus years, right, Jack? I mean, what More. I think it's yeah. over. I think it's going on 50 because it ties to we formed Oracle at Davis Stafford, Kelman and Fenwick for Larry Ellison. As I said, okay. Larry is a really bright guy and uh, he's a billionaire and he owns like his own island in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, he made a lot of money using a lot of talent in California. Now he could still use that talent, but the corporate headquarters moving to Texas means that there's now sort of a, a, a Texas center of gravity for the executives. And, you know, they may fly in and out of California and maybe they're still going to stay in Redwood Shores. They have those two or three buildings that look like, you know, hard drives that literally are these big circular. Yeah. They built them especially for Oracle. They have the Oracle name at the top of them. You can see them whenever you get to go to the airport along 101. Right. But generally speaking, him, Charles Schwab moved moving Schwab to Texas, and now uh, Elon Musk moving Tesla to Texas. Those are three big blows. And I have to tell you, I get calls all the time from people saying, do those guys smell something? Like, is there smoke that they're smelling and a fire is happening? And we just don't realize from a corporate, I mean, obviously there's fires going on all over California, real fires. Yeah. But I mean, they're like a fire that's burning against being a public company or even a private company in California. And I mean all of California because California's statewide filing systems for corporations, oversight systems, right. judicial systems, laws, all of that shifts now to Texas. And he could certainly, they could certainly put all their employees under Texas law agreements. Uh, well, here's my, uh, my take is that... Um, I think California, we call it the politicians, the city, county, whatever, whoever you want to talk. But here, here's my really strong sense is that we are jaded and we think no matter what we do, people will always love and live and work in California. And I, and I think that we're missing the big mistake as we're making is that that's not going to happen. And I think when you take something for granted, right, for that many years, I think we all just always sit back and go, oh, well, there's Silicon Valley, there's venture capital, there's this, there's that. But slowly but surely, that seems to be dissolving around us. And I do think there's there's more to play here and, and not being dramatic. But do you also think that there's some signals here we should be watching for? Absolutely. We've been saying it for a while indirectly that 
California has had many issues that haven't been well attended to. And you could say it's problems in politics. You could say it's problems with the division among the Democrats and the Republicans. You could say it's Sacramento's problem. You could say it's the governor's problem. You could say a million different things. But the reality is more and more people who have immense wealth do not like the 13.3 going up to probably 15 or 16.6 or maybe eventually 20% tax on top of federal taxes Mm -hmm. saying, look, I don't need to do this. I can shift everything to Nevada legally and stay in Nevada or Texas or Florida or any other no tax state for 185 days out of the year. And in a Zoom world, particularly during a pandemic, it ain't going to make any difference. There's still going to be delivery. Yeah, there's a time zone difference. There's there's other differences. And maybe, you know, you have to do a lot of changes between your healthcare and your barber and, you know, your dry cleaners and a million other little vendors that all change, which hurts the ultimate economy. Because when Musk sells his six houses, which he did, in California, he had six different residences, Los Angeles, up here in Northern California, throughout, the, throughout California, he sold them all, exited. All of those workers that used to work in those properties, you know, they're disbanded. Now, maybe the new owners will take some of them, but maybe not because he's a billionaire and he could afford to have a full-time maintenance person and a full-time gardener and so on. So all of that, and you know, now the other side of it is, You see the little or the smaller people, they're not that small, but people like Dr. Peter Attilia, who uh, got educated at Stanford and became a a medical doctor and a podcaster and started making some decent money on his podcast. You know, he's got this medical podcast that's sort of starting to take off. And he just said, you know, I could be in Austin. And in fact, he did a show recently where he said, he and his wife said, man, we should have made this decision years ago. Well, that has an impact on younger people who listen to podcasts, younger medical students that listen to Peter Atiyah, Dr. Peter Atiyah, mm-hmm. about, hey, here's, I have a successful practice. I have my clients come to me now, or I fly to them if they can, you know, pay my way and see them all during a week that I stay here. And I only stays in California yeah. a number of days. It works. Mm-hmm. And the other guy, much bigger podcast, is that guy, Joe, Joe, Joe uh, Rogan. Joe Rogan. He started making some big money. He moved to Austin. Yeah. And he said, man, I'm not going to pay 10% taxes on top of the, or 13% on top of all the federal taxes. I could do this out of Austin. Just you work. know, we, um, we, we need to get on a, I'm going to do some research, or maybe you know some. I'd love, we get it. We, I'd like to get someone on that. I don't know if it's the economist or someone who understands state legislation, you know, kind of the way states are run, so to speak, quote unquote, because the question I had to a group of people the other day and that no one could really answer it is why is, how can a state like Florida, Texas, Nevada, how could they operate so richly without a state income tax, but California is on the brink of disaster with an overabundant state tax. Does that make sense? Right. How does that work? I mean, I know there's a lot of economics behind that, but that that amazes me. Right. It's like what if the real estate tax base provides Florida or the sales tax? I mean, there are other taxes. Sure. Sure. As we know. Yeah. Why is it that California needs to do the level of taxation they do? Right. And the roads in Florida, I can tell you on a firsthand basis, are far better than the roads in Northern California, including, you know, 280 and 101, mm-hmm. comparatively speaking, the freeways here. And a lot of that is federal money anyway, so it really should be comparable. But to me, the level of cleanliness is different. Like you can go through a whole checklist of, you know, obviously weather and sunshine and all the rain and all this other stuff, water, you know, is the water plentiful, is a low cost energy? What's your electric bill like? You know, electric bills in California, at least for the household that I used to run, were like fourteen hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Here, it's barely a hundred dollars a month, Joe. I mean, and I have a pool. It's not like, oh, well, you had a pool 
you, you had a pool in California, but you don't have a pool here. I have a pool. It's about the same size pool. It doesn't have to be heated as much. I guess that's a factor. Uh, the house is actually bigger. Uh, the house is air conditioned. The house in California w was air conditioned, but we rarely use the air conditioner right. because most days it didn't need it. Right. So conceptually, uh, the cost of energy, the cost of gasoline, the cost of a lot of things in California is higher. And I'm still a big believer that California will turn around. But we're going to lose a lot of talent. California has lost a lot of talent. This is the beginning of a mini stampede. It looks to me like it's mostly public companies so far, but I, I have seen private companies say maybe it's time to get the message and mm -hmm. the cost of real estate is so high that our people can't afford it. That's a big factor. A lot of it is the rents are high. The view is that you know the city is getting more and more dense mm -hmm. and the quality of life in the city is not as good as it should be because with density comes all sorts of other problems including if you have a pandemic a worsening of the pandemic so i think a lot is going on that has to be addressed and i think we're we're way like we're in the third inning of trying to address it and really in the third inning of the kind of stampede i bet by the end of next year so i'll make this prediction in 15 or so months i bet there's at least another 15 big companies that all announce that we're leaving California. And then the governor, when it gets to that level, is gonna say, I gotta put together a committee, I gotta get someone to study this, we need to create an economic opportunity zone that brings some of these companies back, we gotta do something because when you lose that many companies that are that big, that are employing that many people, I mean, man, like if Facebook did that tomorrow saying, you know, we can't deal with the level of scrutiny we're getting we think part of it is california i think it's more national than that but we're going to move to a place that's more friendly i don't know whether that would be nevada or florida or 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 texas i mean it probably would be a no tax state yeah. and i would assume they would they would do it for the same reasons that musk is doing it mm -hmm. right yeah no i agree and i think that uh what's what's too bad and it's sad is that uh that's that's I agree with you. I think that's the way it'll work. Unfortunately, it's going to take 15 to 20 companies to make an exit. And then they'll yeah, you, I agree your credit, create a committee, study it. And that'll take another six to eight months. In the meantime, they're losing all this revenue. And, um, you know, it, it still it, it boggles the mind. Um, and the more I think about this, I really want to get an economist or someone on that could speak to this at a more intelligent level. But it boggles the mind how we could have a state tax that we do. We could have the gas tax that we do. By the way, Jack, do you know that we, our gas tax is 50 cents more a gallon than the most expensive place in Honolulu? And that's Honolulu. Honolulu. Our ga California gas tax is 50 cents more a gallon than Honolulu. And right. people, people would argue, and they have a good legitimate, how could that be on an island in the Pacific? Right. Someone told me recently <laughs> that the argument, the argument for the hydrogen car, you know, not just the electric car, but the uh, Prius, there's some version of the Prius called the Mirai from Toyota that takes hydrogen. Yeah. Is that hydrogen gas or the hydrogen vapor that goes into the tank? That's not taxed as a fuel. Really? Because, yeah. Yeah. So the point that they make is there's some sort of rebate that gets paid to you if you lease or buy a Mirai, you actually get a check back really? from, from, I don't know from who, but you get some <laughs> check back because you're not, you're not actually, um, you're not actually burning a fuel. Like for example, if part of the registration scheme in California charges you for a gas vehicle, a certain right. charge, you get some refund because you're not using a fuel. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, it, the, the Mirai, too bad they don't have enough hydrogen stations. That's the one complaint you get, which is, well, you can drive all around the neighborhood so long as you're within 40 miles of a hydrogen station, you're fine. You can get 400 miles on a tank of hydrogen, but, you know, what if you want to go to Las Vegas from here? Yeah. <laughs> is there any hydrogen station that's going to tide you over? Probably not. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a little worse than the electric grid that Tesla. Tesla's got a pretty decent electrical network set up throughout the United States, and they keep building these these uh, places to charge. And I'm sure at some point they'll up the price of a charge, and they'll really become kind of a money machine. If you buy an early version of a Tesla, as I did, they give you free charging for the life of the car. So you got to hope the car life. The car's life lasts as long as you want it to last because there is degradation of the battery over time. Did you, uh, did you by the way, did you, is your Tesla still in California? Or is it no, I moved everything oh, to uh, Florida. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I had to have a car. Yeah. And the price of putting it on a moving van was cheaper uh -huh. than going out and getting a new car. Yeah. And so I just had it moved and I had other cars moved as well. And I gave cars away to my daughters and you know, they were happy. They were like, great, you know, we're getting one of your gas cars. We love it, right? <laughs> so, I mean, they got kind of an early Christmas gift. But the short answer is um, I would really worry that if a dozen, like Wells Fargo apparently is discussing it at the board level. Of course, that means they probably decided to do it. And the trial balloon that's gone out is are people going to be like, Wells Fargo, that was like, the San Francisco Bank. I mean, yeah. they, they have that beautiful stagecoach in their San Francisco office. If it's still there, it used to be there as kind of a monument to the founders of Wells Fargo moving money around in a stagecoach, you know, actual cash dollars. They're moving what? To Texas? Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, they're a national bank. I guess they can move anywhere. And they get freedom to do that. And that changes the economics and it changes the employment mm -hmm. and it changes the salary levels because yeah. the cost, at least so far in Texas, has been about one half. Now, that may catch up really rapidly as people start moving in, particularly to Austin. But I imagine that they'll probably pick a city that's a lower cost city, whether it's Dallas or Houston or, or San Antonio or somewhere else. I imagine Texas must be gleeful. The governor of Texas must be just cracking up, right? I imagine. Like this, this is the best thing that's ever happened. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, no, they must be, uh, I think they're joyful. I, I don't know. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I know that we, we continue to see real estate prices, because this is all directly related to, I mean, theoretically, you have 15, 20 of these companies exiting a lot of times, too, when you talk about, not necessarily, but when you talk about headquarters and boardrooms and different things like that, you are talking, for the most part, about higher C-level, kind of higher income earning individuals that are leaving an area, too, right? So anytime you have that, then that's ultimately going to affect the real estate market. But I think that the thing that insulates this real estate market is the low inventory and there's no no other places to build. And, you know, it's still a desirable place to live. But again, I don't know how long that's going to take to change or if we're going to start seeing some change. I do think that uh, we may have spoke about this last time, Jack, but I do think 2020 may have been the first year where more people left than came to California because the the conversation always used to be, yeah, people are always leaving, but you have double the amount of people coming. But I think for the first time that on record, they actually had more people leave than arrive. Right. And you got to ask the question of who's actually coming. Right. Because if you lose one Elon Musk, you would need like 10,000 uh, middle class people That's or maybe point. even a million middle class people. Right. That's good point. Right. I mean, think about it. It's it's like you've got to say to yourself, uh, it's hard to replace an Elon Musk. That's a thought leader. That thought leader, you really want to make sure that he is going to interact with people that he can mentor as the next thought leaders mm -hmm. at some level. And so you're losing that mentorship that typically happens in person. Obviously, it's more or less happening on Zoom now. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a good thing when too many thought leaders leave because it's very hard to replace them. Yeah. And it's very hard to Im imagine the mentorship that they can give uh, by remote. Now, maybe this whole uh, approach of using Zoom is going to enable 
uh, some new virtual mentorship to actually work out. But historically, certainly people haven't been thinking that way. Yeah. They, they would worry a lot. So I brought up a graph because you asked, you know, is there some data? And I quickly just did a search as you were talking. And if I'll bring it up on the screen just so you have it and we'll make a okay. mental note to see if we can find the right speaker that could speak. Oh, you disabled screen sharing. So you're gonna have to oh, give me the screen share and I'll show it to you. It's something the Mercury News published three years ago. So it's been on the headlines. Why are taxes so much higher in California than they are in Texas? Now you could say the same thing, right? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna take, you have to give me the screen share. Did I give it to you? Yeah, Let's give see. me the, the option. I think you have to say, enable screen share to others, or I have to send you the link in chat. Why don't I send you the link? Multiple. In chat. Yeah, multiple, multiple, multiple. So I just did a fast search. Why do Californians pay more in state and local taxes than Texas? Let's see if this works. Yeah, okay, it just came up now. Here it is. Of course, there are a bunch of ads in there too. Um, but here's the graphs. New York is the worst. It's always been the worst. I've always <laughs> thought, because New York City is the worst, right? Yeah. New York City has a city tax on top of a county tax on top of a state tax, three taxes. In California, it's much more just the California state tax. So, you know, it's 8,000 uh, versus 5,000. And then Pennsylvania is next. And the U.S. average is 4,600. And Florida, and they're adding, of course, you know, sales taxes and that sort of thing. Because Florida doesn't have an income tax, right? Mm -hmm. But the cost of education appears to be a lot higher in New York, as well as in Texas. I mean, as well as in California. Mm -hmm. California um uh spends more apparently more money on students i mean that's one reason why there's more spend on corrections if you look at spend there's more spend on transportation like those are the metrics there's more spend on public well, safety. you know it's it, uh, what's interesting here jack and we'll talk out loud for those that aren't seeing this but i, I look at transportation california has got to have one of the worst transportation systems in the in the United States, but yet the highest spend, the near the nearly highest spend. Right, Pennsylvania right. is the next highest, right? That right That's there is the glaring highest. to me. You could see if you had a state that had an impeccable transportation system, right? Right. Then then right. you'd say, okay, well, that's it's interesting. But look at the crime. I mean, New York doesn't have a great transportation system. Yeah. It, I mean, look at these numbers. They stack them differently. It's not really, it should be public transport spending per resident but they put the graph in a weird way on transportation because california spends 215 dollars i guess those are dollars per so. resident yeah right new york spends three times that 667 now new york has a subway it's got a rail system california doesn't have much of a rail system and i guess other than a bit of a BART system that exists yeah. here, it's not much, and a bit of a underground that exists in Los Angeles, it's not much. Yeah. It's it's amazing to me, right? And so you look at these different places where, yeah, big spend on correctional spending, you know, big amount of money, both New York and California uh -huh. compared to others. So it really is about managing the spend. I guess you can go from that point of view, right? How do you manage to spend? And, you know, whatever you spend, you want to cover, so you have to tax, right? So you want a way to reduce taxes, you have to cut the spending. Well, how do you cut the spending given the entrenched politics that's mostly a liberal, really socialism type of system in California, which is why more people below the poverty line gravitate to California because social services will exist in California to provide a means for someone that doesn't otherwise have means, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. isn't that the big bigger picture in all this? California is more, more socialistic. I mean, I don't say that in a negative way. They're, they're just more willing to take care of people that are below the poverty line. Is that the uh, homelessness too? 
Am I reading this correctly? So is, is, that, is it comparing, are these charts comparing these major states to the U.S.? Is that what that's doing? Yeah, well, the U.S. is the average. I see, right? I see. Okay. The middle. They, just, they just did an average. At least three years ago, this is what okay. the article that I'll, 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 I'll spin up. It's the Mercury News from three years ago. Did this, you know, ask the question you were asking, which yeah. is, what? why are we so high in taxes compared to Texas or could have been compared to Texas or Florida for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, along the way, as you lose richer people, right? This is Governor Brown at the time in front of a state budget chart, right? Mm -hmm. As you lose people that are wealthier and wealthier, you're losing a big part of the tax base, right? Because those yeah. people are kind of the big fat base. You know, if you have um, like probably Larry Ellison, I'm going to guess, I hope Larry, you don't get upset, but I'm going to guess you make a hundred million dollars a year mm -hmm. from your investments, your Oracle stock, your this, your that. So if you're in California and you have a hundred million dollars worth of ordinary income, you're going to pay 13.3 million in state taxes. Well, multiply Larry Ellison times whatever number of really wealthy people are like him, that's a big fat part of the base of taxes that get collected. When those people leave with their companies and say, you know, I now work for a company that uh, has its principal place of business and its corporate offices, its executive suite in Austin or right. Dallas or Houston, Texas or Las Vegas or wherever Nevada or Florida, they pick up and get a residence. They can buy a house mm -hmm. for even just a few million. Right. For what the taxes are that they save in that year. Right. So you multiply those numbers, Joe, and it starts to get scary that you're losing a big part of the base. So then, you know, these less wealthy people, they're not going to make up that difference. No. So then you have to cut. You just can't afford not to cut. So this is sort of the debt spiral that people talk about, which is if too many of these companies and their executives leave and all relocate, now they may still travel to California within whatever the tax bird rules are for yeah. making sure that you comply, right. but they're not going to file California tax no, returns. No, they're, not, sure. they're not here. Yeah, I'm sure someone's doing this already, but we, it would be interesting exercise, and I know someone's already doing it, but what is the cost? And, and I'm sure you could get pretty close. I mean, so it'd be interesting to put real numbers on, like if someone came up and said, listen, maybe you guys don't understand, but we just did a study, and the cost of Elon Musk moving his headquarters, executive team, and all these things is costing California, you know, $28 million a quarter. I don't know, whatever the number is, right? It's going to be far more than that. Yeah. It, just from the must, the loss of the must tax return, and then at least 10 to 20 people around him right. that are his entourage of executives right. that'll say, hey, if Elon's going to Texas, I'm going with him. Like, he's like Jesus. He's like a Jesus Christ figure, I'm sure. So, we, so that's a... Grow wealthy people. It's kind of a sad statement, isn't it, that you have that kind of revenue exiting the state. I mean, literally making, holding up a sign saying, I'm leaving and I'm taking my, you know, half a billion dollars a year with me of tax revenue that's exiting California. You would think someone would, would say, stop, stop this. So let, let's, let's get a commit. Let's, let's figure out what is going on here. But is it just me or is it just la la land? Or maybe they I think, think I think there's a certain degree of arrogance mm -hmm. in Sacramento, like leave, there'll be somebody coming out of Stanford that'll take your place. Like there's a certain belief that Stanford and Berkeley and UCSF and all these great universities can now remember Musk grew up in South Africa, so he's not a product of the educational system here. Right. He's an immigrant. Yeah. The guy who's running Google right now is an immigrant or of parents that are immigrants. The guy who's running Microsoft right now is either an immigrant or his parents were immigrants. Like we can go down the list of all these people that are running these companies. 
And when you look at it and they, you know, boy, if Apple ever left California, that would be dramatic. I mean, and your point is rightfully taken, Joe, I think if you're a governor of a state, you should be smelling the smoke ahead of all these other people smelling the smoke. And you should be like, I want to sit down with you. How do we keep you happy? Oh, the sheriff or whoever from Alameda County was busting your chops and I'll figure out a solution. You know, we'll figure out a special pandemic precaution legislation or something. Because it's not just the governor, it's also the state Senate and it's the state representatives because they're all sort of responsible for the leadership. Yeah, the governor's at the very top, but he needs legislation passed. And the question is, what's the legislation that's going to make people happy? Because there is a tax system. It's got to be uniform. It can't make so many special cases up. So somewhere in this, uh, you could say that this issue has been festering for probably over 10 years. Yeah. And now it's come, the pandemic has made it come to a head because yeah. people have started to realize I can get my work done anywhere. Yeah. And I can, have, make, uh, I can be effective. Just a couple more minutes before we wrap things up. But the other thing that comes to mind, too, that I don't know, and I'm sure a lot of people know this, but whether someone, some people just want to let it slide by or they're too naive. But for a state that is constantly looking for social, kind of social handouts, right? California is big on social handouts and programs that, am I mistaken or... You, don't you have a better shot at getting some of the tax base uh, from corporations and companies to cover some of those costs than you do individual taxpayers? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, uh, California is viewed as, as a very high corporate tax state as well. Right. And very high to even form a company. Like you could form a company in Wyoming for like 35 bucks, maybe 50 now. Mm-hmm. But in California, it's always like 800 plus some additional filing fees. Like it's always more by like 10 to 20 X more. And so people look at that and say, that's a big negative. And so there is a curve. And it's interesting because, you know, Steve King left right. uh, California about a year or two ago and went to Arizona. I said, Steve, Arizona's got taxes. He said, I'm OK paying some tax. Arizona's like 4%. He said, I'm okay paying 4% because the roads are decent. The place is clean. You know, there isn't a high degree of crime, all these, you know, sort of quality of life factors. And his point is, I think it's valid. People will pay a certain level of tax if they feel like there's a quality that's being returned. Mm -hmm. But when the quality starts going down, you can't park your car anymore without the window being broken and you're, briefcase being stolen and the glass being all over the place or your house being broken in, or I, you know, I can't tell you how many people have told me that packages have been stolen, mm-hmm. uh, that have been dropped off and the criminal is on the camera, but the police are like, we're too busy to look at the camera. Like there's no empathy at all. Not to say the police are bad, but they're basically too busy. You know, this is, you know, a little petty crime that adds up. That's a quality of life thing. And that starts to add up and grade on people. And it becomes like, hey, look, at some level, this is not working anymore for the amount of tax. It's like a social contract that's busted. And the people who are taking advantage, the free riders, if you want to call them that, the the social safety net that's protecting all of them Mm -hmm. is sort of detrimental to all those who feel like, you know, this doesn't work for me anymore. And you could argue the magic of the American system is there's at least 49 other states that you can try out if you want to stay in America. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to jump and go to Puerto Rico or go to the EU or go to Greenland or Iceland or somewhere, or New Zealand is what a lot of people are talking about because it's so supposedly pristine and clean, then you can try a different state and you're still an American you're still able to vote in a national election. You're still able to do a lot of things. You just don't pay taxes in yeah. any of the eight or nine states that don't charge any taxes to, to uh, individual taxpayers. There right. may be some corporate tax, but you can go to the state of Washington. You can go to the state of Nevada. 
and you can try another state. Now, we all know it's not really that easy to just up and leave, but you could argue this digitization of work is making it easier mm -hmm. to leave because people can do the same work in a different location with the same delivery results, so long as the internet connection is decent enough. In fact, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen states compete <laughs> with each other on we have the best 5G. In fact, yeah. I, think can, I, think can, I think Kansas, state of Kansas is doing that right now because Sprint is Hello there. America, huh? yeah. yeah, they're like, they're like, come to Kansas. We got the fastest internet. And you know, I think there are some geeks that are on the internet seven by 24 who actually move to Kansas. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, Joe, I'm not making this up. So That's in good. the world, <laughs> the Facebook world of the metaverse, where we have goggles on almost seven by 24, maybe even in our sleep, yeah. and we're constantly being bombarded by fast internet, they're like, we've got to deliver a fast internet. And yeah. that's like an infrastructure thing. That's like clean water and clean air. I know it's laughable, but it I'm telling you, there are people that move to places that, and I've seen people say this. One of the factors is now not, does the house have a view? Does the house have fast internet? Does the house have fiber yeah. going to it? Yeah. You know, does this house have a fiber? In fact, my neighbor was able to get a trench dug because he is one of these people, not not Dr. Bortz on the other side, the neighbor on the right side, basically had a trench dug and had fiber installed down into the town to get fiber up the hill. Really? He, he was saying to me, well, you know, if you want fiber, you know, you should have a trench dug and you can connect <laughs> my fiber. And I was like, what's the difference? He says, oh, it's amazingly different. He said like a movie downloads like in six seconds, you know, three hour movie, like bang. Uh -huh. Just like that. No. I mean, really, really fast internet, Joe. I mean, we we think it's good now that this is not wobbly. What we're doing tonight is not wobbly right. or this right. afternoon is wobbly. But he claims it's like in a whole different league <laughs> of what's possible. So well, we'll uh we'll wrap things up as a good show. I think that uh we're gonna have to keep a close eye on this and we're gonna work to get an economist or someone on, I think it'd be great to get some insight on the inner workings of this. And you know I really who the guy, you know who the guy is that comes to mind and he's, he's been around in California for a while. I think he's now retired and no longer in California. Ed Chow. Ed Chow used to be the oh, representative. He yeah. is a business school professor from Stanford. Oh yeah. He did really well. In fact, he was the motivator of uh, David Stafford, Kelman, and Fenwick leaving New York, Cleary Gottlieb in New York, and coming to California, the law really? firm that I joined. Ed Chow was the representative, and he was the business school professor who said to Blake Stafford, who was the sort of lead lawyer at the time, Stanford Law graduate, and who said, hey, we should leave New York and come to California, talk about migration out of a high-tax state to what was then a lower tax state, still is technically lower tax than New York. And Ed Chow uh, knows a lot of the history of the tax system. So I'm going to write an email to Ed Chow to see if we can get him on the show. Yeah, that'd be great. We could both interview him. And Ed's, Ed's a good friend. And we can say, Ed, what happened? And I think yeah. Ed moved to like Incline Village or somewhere outside California as well. Yeah. So he, he I, I think I'm right. I think he moved. I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, he retired from politics. He retired yeah. from Stanford University. But he knows a lot of the history. And he knows what really happened. And, of course, we know Proposition 13 changed right. the property tax thing, which probably changed a little bit about how the rest of the taxes had to work. So there's a whole you know, octopus right. level of legs that are all spiraling around together that probably tell that story. And probably a book can be written about it because a book certainly has to be written about how to fix it. Mm -hmm. Because if we keep losing the punchline that I'll say to the show, Joe, if we keep losing the Charles Schwab's, the uh, Elon Musk's, the Larry Ellison's of the world, and whoever is driving Wells Fargo at this point, I don't know who that is, but if the, we lose Wells Fargo as well and all those executives, and that continues, and my prediction of another 15 in the next 15 months, which means we have to check this mm -hmm. at the end of next year, 
I am telling you, you're going to see a revolution in in cuts because there won't be enough tax revenue. There just won't be enough tax right. revenue. Yeah. And I don't know where where they will go or how they will do. Uh, I don't think they can increase the tax to like 25 or 30 or 40 percent and, you know, have people not leave. Yeah. I think people will say this is crazy. Well, yeah, email, shoot him an email. Let's see if we get him on. That'd be great. We'll, yeah, he'd uh, be good. He'd we'll be see good. If we can get some more insight on this, but uh, we will check in with you later, Jack. And uh, again, let me know when you're heading out this direction. So good. Absolutely. Be good good, good job. Good seeing you. You look great. Thank you. You too. Keep up I'm, that yoga. I'm keeping it up, man. You know, you know how I look. I'm I'm on the mat. I'm on the mat every day, and you know. It really does. It really is a game changer to do something like this. You know, what I what I do every day looks That's like amazing. This. And, you know, I do it, of course, with all these young women. They're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing I have to say, and we need to leave this on the record. So there was a woman in the yoga studio the other day. This is really funny. And I said this right in front of my wife. She was laughing. She thought I was flirting with her. I really wasn't. She was there with this guy. And she said, this is his first time. And they were taking a picture together. And this guy looked like it might be her husband. Okay. So I had, I, I don't know where my head went, because this guy maybe was groaning a little bit, like, you know, he, he wasn't smiling the way I'm smiling yeah. in that picture. And I said, I'm going to go up to him, and I'm going to say something probably a little bit risque, but I'm going to say, look, just remember this foreplay happens way before you get into the bedroom. And the fact that you're here with your wife, this is like really the beginning and it's early morning. This is like the beginning of in 12 hours, believe me, there's going to be a big payoff for you. I was ready to say that. And she said, just as I was ready to say, it was on the tip of my tongue. I was going to say it to both him and her, because they were at the end of the session, all sweaty. She said, Oh, I want you to meet my son. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh I, I bit my tongue. And I said to her, I said, I want to put you aside. I said to her, I'm so glad I didn't say this. And I don't want your son to hear it. But you look so great. And she's a really yoga enthusiast. Yeah. I thought that was your husband. He said, no, this is like my night. He, look, he looks older. This kid looks older than 19 or 20. And she generally did not look like she was even in her 40s, but apparently she was in her late 40s. Wow. And she looked literally like she was in her 30s. And this wow. guy looked like, well, maybe she had like a young That's husband. Funny. <laughs> Yo, she, you know, here's the kicker of the story. She said to me, you made my day, Jack. And then she said, did you know, did you know that today is my birthday? Seriously? Oh, that's she funny. Said, she said, did you know that today was my birthday? And I said, no. She said, you told her, I'm going to go home and tell my husband. <laughs> and try to get him to come to the yoga studio. And she said, believe me, I cannot drag his ass into this place. Uh, I barely funny. got my son to come here. Oh, and I said, yeah. you're doing the right thing. And she really, I have to say, if you looked at her, you would say, no. and she's been doing yoga for the last 20 years. So that's where I want to be when I okay. get Well, I think that's a great way to end the show. We're, we went from California real estate and businesses exiting to Jack's yoga class. So. <laughs> I'm serious, Joe. I have to tell you, I I bit my tongue when I heard that, and I said this to Lee, and Lee said, "You shouldn't oh, be thinking funny. that way at all. You're you're getting you're you're so out of line." I said, "Are you kidding me? She looked great, oh, man, and Lee funny. looks great as well. So it's all good. It's all good. All good right, you. We'll, we'll take care. Take care of yourself. We'll see you later." You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.